Let's check our mail and see if it's radioactive. Here is a box. Perhaps I've just received this box. I wonder if it's radioactive. Well, the polymaster thinks it's radioactive. Yep. The polymaster thinks that it's putting off over one microsievert per hour. And its strongest it looks like one microsievert. Okay. Well, let's cut the sound off of this. And let's double check that with a Geiger counter. So cut the sound off, put this away for a minute. Let's see what the Geiger counter thinks. What's in the box? Now of course I believe, and I'm an advocate of this, that every single person should own a Geiger counter. In the same way you own a, a, smoke, a smoke detector and a fire extinguisher. Why people don't own Geiger counters, I don't know. With nuclear plants melting down and blowing up all over the place, with a uh, pet food dishes coming out with cobalt-60 in them with uh, missing uh, neutron sources in Texas. It seems like a good idea that everybody should own at least a basic Geiger counter. Because if nothing more, you'll know something's radioactive. You won't know why, but you'll at least know that it is. Even if that uh, Geiger counter is an old one, like the CDV-700, which have set to times one mode. As you can see, the CDV-700 easily shows us that there's gamma radiation. In fact, let's set it to times 10 mode and see what we get. Plenty of gamma radiation. And we'll open up the beta shield. Not too much of that. So we're looking at about 500, 400 counts per minute from the um, CDV-700. About 100 counts per minute, looks like, from the CRM-100. Got 122, 144, 147, and so on. Okay, 150. Now, let's get to the root of what's in this. And there's a quick way to do that. The Polymaster. The Polymaster will tell us what's in the box without opening it. This could be a very beneficial thing to have at a business, for example, if you want to test for uh, materials that go by. Just put this thing there where the boxes go, and you'll immediately detect something. And then you can see why by looking into it. So let's hook this up to the computer and see what we get. The computer is now ready to connect to the spectroscopic pager and tell us what is in the box. This, of course, it can do, and I'll show you uh, through the actual computer itself so you can see much better. Uh, this unit connects via Bluetooth. You could also connect via USB with the other version of this device. What we'll do is we'll simply tell the unit to go into Bluetooth mode. Now it is in Bluetooth. And I've cut off the sound and I've cut off the vibrate. Because we don't need the alarms. We know there's something in this and we don't want this thing to vibrate until it falls off the box. It will light up as you can see. It's lighting up to say that there's something there, of course. Now, We'll tell the computer to connect, and it takes it just a few seconds. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we uh, select the pager, and we're connected via Bluetooth now. And you can see the background count right there in counts per second, which is pretty normal for the device. And then it shows you dose, the amount that you're uh, taking in from running this. Now, let's calibrate it. Now, we've moved the box away. You move the package away from the unit. In fact, you should probably do this before you even start running packages past it, or testing anything for that matter. Calibration is a good way to get the unit nice and squared away and set and ready to go, and also make sure it's aware of the uh, current background temperature, which is very, very important when doing gamma spectroscopy. And even if you buy this thing, or you uh, use it, and you, you're doing like um, just the rapid isotope detection feature, and you're not actually you know doing gamma spectroscopy, just kind of like the push button version of it, it's still important to make sure you do this. Click the calibration button, let the unit calibrate, 
give it a minute. Don't move it around while it's calibrating either. It does take it a few seconds to do. All right, we should be getting just about done now. As you can see, it doesn't monitor anything while it's calibrating. Okay, now we are uh, done. So we can put the box beside the device again. And we should real oh there we go. We get a really immediate alarm. Look at that. Look at that count rate and counts per second. Very high. Definitely something in that box. Now, let's identify it. Click this button right here, the auto uh, the auto isotope identifier button, and let's uh, let the unit go. Now you're going to see a screen in front of you here. <clears throat> and the way this is laid out is the bottom, the x-axis, is energy from low energy on the left moving to higher energy as you go on the right. And that's the energy of the gamma rays that hit the unit that it senses. And the up and down part, the uh, y-axis, is the number of counts in that particular amount of energy. And you see there's a big spike, several of them in fact. That one right there, and I know exactly what that's from. And then the other two over here in the end. Those are the actual uh, peaks coming from the actual things that we um, have in the box. And there it is. Industrial sources, cesium-137 and cobalt-60. If any, anybody's familiar with those spectrums, you can, or those, um, the, those uh, isotopes, you immediately see the reason why it detected those. Now let's take a full gamma spectrum. We'll see how this thing does. Now it takes a second to do a full gamma spectrum. We're almost done. There it is. You notice that looks like what you saw before, just a little bigger. We can change the channels into energy so we actually see the real energy. And let's see here. In the center of the screen, the, the peak dead down the middle is actually 662 kilo electron volts. It's coming from cesium-137. The two that are on the right are coming from uh, cobalt-60 at 1173.24 kilo electron volts and 1332.5 kilo electron volts. This spectrum is getting pretty good now. We can stop it in a second and actually uh, run an isotope identify on it and see what it comes up with the amount of uh, uh, activity that's in the box. Now the reality is to do an activity analysis we'd want to run this for a lot longer than we're doing here. Because we're basically just about done. So we'll stop this. We'll run an identification and this should match up with what we saw earlier. And then notice it shows you what we found. Cobalt 60, Cesium 137 and it also shows a list of what wasn't found and if you were to scroll down it's quite a long and extensive list so you know what isn't in it, which is kind of interesting to know what's not in it. It's kind of a fun thing to look at. Now these uh, readings are, are, are quite low compared to what's actually in here. If you gave this more time, it would have actually come up with more accurate readings in activity. But, you know, that's fine. So we should probably open up the box now and see what's inside of it. Gamma spectroscopy truly is fun. Well... Now we know what's in the box, cobalt-60 and cesium-137. Let's open it up. The best way to open the box, of course, is with an epic knife. Maybe this little pointy hammer thing. Why? Because that's, well, that's, that's how I am. So let's push this out of the way. Put the polymaster away, it has done its job. Remember, safety, got away from yourself when handling horrendously nuclear materials. <laughs> Realistically speaking, you should never cut anything open the way I do it. I'm, I'm weird. Alright, so what's in the box? <gasps> Look at this. Cobalt, oh sorry, Cesium 137 and Cobalt 60. Let's get them out. That's correct. Cobalt-60 and cesium-137. There they are. And of course, you can use these stickers here to label them correctly. This is nuclear material. I got these from United Nuclear. 
they were like 10 or 15 bucks to buy this little roll. Really great idea, by the way, too, if you have anything radioactive. Always label everything. Always. Then you wouldn't have to use a spectroscopic pager to figure out what it is. But anyway, now that we have these guys, let's take a quick peek at what their spectrum looks like. And then let's take a quick peek at what beautiful spectrums look like after we run them through the more powerful spectrometer. So this is Tom from anti-proton.com, and uh, bye-bye.